try to keep us on track and and uh, get us out of here so you can enjoy your afternoon. Again, uh, I know many of you have seen me. Uh, I was introduced Sunday evening as well. I'm Betty Burke from Merit Network. I'm responsible for the NANOG operations and some other Merit projects back in Ann Arbor. The agenda for this afternoon and this evening is pretty straightforward. It's up on the screen. I'm just going to give you some of my general observations of why we're here. I'm going to introduce Mike McPherson to my right, who is the Merit Interim CEO and President. Steve Feldman is here in the audience, and he's going to share some views with us uh, about the Merit proposal. Martin Hannigan, as well, is going to share some views. He had to make sure he was there. And then, in uh, large part, what we wanted to do was leave the meeting open for open discussion of the charter that you now have seen up on Merit's web, the NANOG Merit website, as well as uh, any conclusions or next steps that we might come away with from this afternoon's meeting. So with that, I'll move to my very, very brief slide, which is just a little bit of stage setting. Why are we here? Well, we're here because in Reston, Virginia, a group of folks from the NANOG community, those who are attending the meeting, met with me after the meeting and began to have a dialogue with me about some concerns they had with NANOG operations in general, some observations that they had, which then led to some additional discussions in the NANOG list, as well as a community meeting that we all had in good time in Las Vegas. That led to the charter proposal that you've seen from Merit, as well as a Sunday night discussion that I gave a budget report to the community. It's just all of the background information that brings us to this afternoon's meeting. What do we hope to accomplish? We hope to come away, we being Merit, hope to come away from this meeting this afternoon with a clear set of understandings uh, issues from all of you, from your point of view, any reactions that you may have with the uh, NANOG Charter as proposed, and uh, get moving and go to the next step of NANOG evolution. What do we want to accomplish over the summer months to put together a great program for you in the fall? So that's the background setting, and I'm sort of done. I will introduce Mike McPherson now, and we'll go through some of the charter proposals. Somebody, it's always tough using somebody else's computer. So. Uh, What I wanted to do today, just briefly, because I, I'm making the assumption that if you've taken the time to be here and, and perhaps stayed late, that, uh, that you've already read through these materials. And in fact, a lot of you had a hand in producing uh, the uh, NANOG reform uh, bylaws draft. But I wanted to run through the uh, major points very quickly, just as a, a, a recap, in case there's somebody in the room who's coming to this uh, late. So uh, we've. Uh, We've cribbed from the uh, NANOG reform proposal quite a lot. Uh, we at Merit uh, have uh, talked about uh, more than just the folks who, uh, who are directly involved in, in NANOG. We've talked a lot about the things that have been proposed by the reform community over the, over the past year and, uh, and find a whole lot of sense and, uh, um, and value in that stuff. And so, uh, by and large, uh, we find ourselves in agreement with the things that have been proposed. Uh, we've put together a plan, which we uh, sent out a mail, mail message about. Uh, we intend to implement the plan uh, over the summer and make this actually happen. This isn't uh, just uh, talking points. Uh, our intention is to move ahead, and uh, we wanted to give this opportunity today for people to say their, their piece if they think that uh, we're not going far enough. If you think we're going too far, that's what we're looking for today. So uh, I won't talk much about this. This is just uh, kind of an amalgam of the current uh, mission and the uh, and some new language out of the uh, the new document. Um, one of the one of the things so the the uh, the NANOG reform bylaws proposal 
uh, was written uh, from the point of view of NANOG as a separate organization. Of course, NANOG is not a separate organization. NANOG is something that, that Merit does. Uh, and uh, that, at least for the moment, uh, needs to, to stay that way. And, 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 the, and that has some fallout later on in the uh, proposed charter, as you've already seen. Uh, but just a reminder that NANOG is a Merit activity. Uh, it's something that Merit's committed to. Uh, we're enthusiastic about the changes uh, that, that have been proposed. We believe that, that it's critical for the future success of NANOG, and we are committed, committed to the success of NANOG. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't think these changes were really necessary and useful. Um, as I mentioned in my message, which probably all of you have seen, uh, we, we at Merit have a fairly strong opinion about the question of membership. There are a couple of issues. Uh, one issue is purely mechanical. Uh, if we establish a, a, a membership class which is separate from meeting attendance as, as uh, eligibility for voting, then we have to put some sort of infrastructure in place for managing membership. Uh, that, that's purely a mechanical issue. There would be uh, effort and cost involved with that. And, and so if we were going to do that, we need to be sure that it's worth doing. We also have, uh, I think, strong feelings, perhaps rooted in the history of NANOG, that, uh, that there's something special about uh, participation in the face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, and uh, we understand that there was, uh, I, I believe I wasn't involved in the uh, entire NANOG reform discussion. I wasn't on that mailing list. But, uh, but I believe that there were extensive discussions on the question of voting rights and membership. And we may hear some more of that today. But we're proposing that eligibility for voting uh, be determined solely by registration for a meeting. And, uh, and we use the, the word registration very specifically as opposed to attendance. Uh, again, if we, if we used attendance as, as the criterion, we would have to establish some sort of mechanism for tracking attendance. And uh, we already track registration. That one's easy. Uh, this also, if you feel really strongly uh, uh, that uh, you never want to go to an ANOG meeting, but you sure want to vote in ANOG, this gives you kind of a backdoor membership if you really want to think of it that way. If you want to register for a meeting once every two years, then you can vote. You don't have to show up. You just have to register. Uh, we, uh, we are proposing that, uh, that we go with a six, persons, uh, six elected member steering committee with a, a seventh member appointed by merit. Uh, the steering committee would uh, appoint the program committee, uh, would appoint the uh, mailing list administration team, uh, would work with Merit on, on the budget, and would be uh, deeply involved in, in fi fiscal issues for NANOG, uh, would work with Merit uh, to provide lead. Yeah. I just wonder if I can ask a question before or during the presentation. Sure. Um, Previously, you said that anyone who registers uh, for NANOG can participate in the vote. Yeah. And there's a lot of discussion about this, I know, in the reform conversations. Um, are you suggesting that people could register and then uh, not show up but also not pay the registration fees and still participate? Or are you saying that there no, is, you... in fact, a, a four-fee way of voting? It will cost you 100 bucks or 25 bucks, or what was the model that you had in your mind? No, we're, we're suggesting that, uh, that a paid registration is your, is your uh, uh, ticket to vote, basically. So in effect, 350 every two years? 350 every two years. Right. And so if you want to think of that as a membership fee, then you can. But we would certainly hope that you would show up, since we think that there's tremendous value in the face-to-face. -face. Yeah, thanks for the clarification. Um, uh, let's see. I think I was on liaison. So we would ask the steering committee to work with uh, with Merit uh, on liaison with other organizations, the various other uh, regional uh, registries and, and uh, operator forums and those sorts of things. Um, and we uh, we propose in the uh, the new charter to enshrine in the charter uh, some things that have been happening informally with the program committee that we establish criteria for uh, participation uh, that that uh, that we have a way of dealing with. Uh, the occasional person who might uh, might get elected to a steering committee or appointed to a program committee and then find that they don't have the time, but they just sort of hang on. There needs to be some uh, standard for participation in order to continue to sit on either the steering committee or the program committee. Uh, steering committee elections would take place nominally at the last meeting during the calendar year. Uh, this first time, we're proposing that uh, that we advance that a little bit so we'd have a steering committee in place in October in Los Angeles. 
so this first steering committee would sit uh, for 13 or 14 months instead of 12 months. Um, we would have an, an open nomination process. Uh, candidates would supply bios to be posted on the website so everybody could see what the the, uh, the qualifications of the people who are running and there would be an election. Uh, mailing list moderation would be uh, not so different from the way it is now. We, as, as you all know, uh, implemented a mailing list administration team. We're proposing that team would be, would be appointed by the uh, steering committee three members appointed by the steering committee, one member appointed by Marat. Uh, we would uh, propose to continue with the three conferences a year, although this is something the steering committee we would expect would talk about. There's been a lot of talk about going back to two conferences a year. Uh, we would expect that would be a steering committee topic among the other sorts of, of strategic topics for the steering committee. And we would uh, certainly look to the steering committee for guidance and help in uh, selecting hosts and meeting locations. And in fact, addressing the question of, of uh, how hosts are selected and, uh, and citing for the, for the meetings. I understand there are differing opinions about, about moving around versus staying in one place, for example. Program committee um, would be appointed by the steering committee. Uh, we, uh, we're proposing that uh, a, a member of the steering committee serve ex officio on the program committee and that the chair of the program committee serve ex officio on the steering committee in both cases without a vote uh, in order to provide li uh, important liaison role between the two groups so the two groups don't get out of sync. And we're proposing uh, a modification from the uh, NANOG reform uh, draft bylaw proposal. Uh, we, we believe there needs to be a way for the community to bring forward uh, changes, a formal process for bringing forward, ch forward changes. So we propose that, uh, that uh, the community can originate um, proposed amendments to the charter. And I think that's the end of my slides. Um, so can a steering committee member committee vote on both? I, th I believe that, uh, that the proposal is no, that uh, the two groups need to be separate. You need to be either one or the other, except for the sort of exchange of prisoners that we've proposed. Both of them, uh, especially the program committee, but both of them, if the steering committee is really active, are likely to be uh, big jobs, and, and asking one person to take on both could be tough. Plus, you'd be appointing yourself, which is a little odd. OK. So uh, Steve uh, wanted to say a few words, or, or we strong arm Steve into staying, saying a few words uh, from the perspective of uh, a program committee member. I don't believe Steve's speaking on behalf of the program committee, just from that perspective. Uh, yeah, I couldn't possibly presume to speak for just myself. Um, well, I'm Reasonably happy with this. Um, this whole thing has been somewhat of an education process, trying to figure out what the community wants, what Marriott's needs are, and all that. One of the things that I think has really been a good thing that came out of this was Merritt had to stand back and think about what Merritt's role in NANOG should be. And it took some pressure, but Merritt has done, I think, a good job of deciding that. And in uh, <clears throat> making it so we can move forward now. Um, the other thing that I'm happy about with the proposal is that it does uh, ensure some continuity going forward um, so that we don't end up with the case where it's a whole bunch of new people starting from scratch trying to replicate what's been done in the past. But it also uh, requires some new blood to, to be brought in um, so others can see what a glamour job the pro program committee is, for example. Um, and, uh, yeah, I uh, um, can't think of much else to say on the subject uh, other than that I think this is probably the one of the best of a range of possible outcomes that I saw going into the process. Okay, thanks, Steve. Martin, uh, we also uh, prevailed on Martin to say a few words, again, not representing, but from the perspective of uh, uh, the NANOG reform group. Yeah, so I'm Martin Hannigan. I don't speak for anybody but me. Uh, sounds good to me. Um, I talked to um, Dan Golding and Rod Seastrom, who weren't able to hear and, um, they, my comments. Sounds good to me. And I think that um, it was good to uh, 
have merit, have a little pressure to take a look at the way things were working in the past and to analyze what needs to be done to go forward. I think that um, I think it's I think it's uh, good that you know you guys are renewing your support okay, and that uh, you know we're gonna get a little bit of self self uh, self rule so to speak and I think that um, I think it's all good. That's pretty much it. Oh, uh, one thing I I do want to tell you is a few of us learned that uh, it's not as easy as it looks from the outside. Uh, looking in and you know if anybody wants to get some detail on that you know I'll be down in the lobby in a little bit and uh, I'd be happy to buy your beer and, and give you my perspective on that thanks yeah or, or you could hold court on the Nanag yacht in the in the harbor here this afternoon if you like hey, you want to spend the money I'm there <laughs> <laughs> we'll fly you out there on the Nanag helicopter yeah I you know this is this has been a uh, a learning experience, I think, for a lot of us at Merit, and uh, uh, and a good thing. And I want to say thank you for uh, for keeping these issues alive and, and making sure that, that Merit address these issues. Um, I think the uh, every organization evolves, and uh, Nanog hadn't evolved for a long time. It was time for Nanog to evolve, and, and we're enthusiastic about this evolution. Um, so, thank you very much uh, for that. I also want to say that that the that we really believe in uh, in the changes that we're planning to make this summer. This is, uh, uh, I probably can't say anything that will, will convince you if you're uh, skeptical or, or, uh, um, or worse, paranoid. Um, I can't say anything that would convince you that, that we're sincere about this, but I will say that, that we're sincere about these changes, that, uh, that we believe uh, that uh, the folks who are who are committed to Nanog, who are members of the Nanog community, uh, know best what they need, and uh, and that Merit, as as Merit operates Nanog, needs to listen to the input from the community, uh, and uh, I'm sincere in making that happen. We are going to listen. Uh, this is not just a token effort uh, that that we're doing, hoping that everybody will think, oh well, they they agreed with us, and now we'll worry about something else for a while. Actually, so yeah. yeah. Questions and comments. I'd like to, uh, I'm, I'm Vijay Gill. I would like to uh, mention the fact that what it, what all this process has managed to generate is a lot of political BS, and we are starting to look more and more like ITU. I liked the way the old Nanog thing worked, and I thought it worked fine for many years. Then we have a bunch of people who thought, let's go and change this thing without realizing the ramifications of doing this stuff and realizing that it's actually pretty much harder than it looks from sitting outside. It's easier to wind than it is to actually do. So what it looks like here is that we are going down the route of ITU, and if there's ever a steering committee and then study groups to study like changes going forward, I think the point of NANOG is lost. The point of NANOG has not been presentations and meetings. The point of NANOG has been business done in the interstices of the meeting. It's the hallway conversations. It's a group that most of the value I drive from NANOG comes from. And so I think putting voting and memberships, and that's all putting bureaucracy around the experience that made NANOG useful for me. That's my take on it. Hi, I'm Steve Gibbard. I was the, uh, the main author of the original NANOG reform proposal, and the last of several editors on what I guess became the NANOG reform bylaw proposal that I think you used a lot of in in your proposal. Thank and you for thank you for doing all the hard work. Yeah, it so saved, so us, I, I, saved I, us a lot of writing. Oh, thanks. Um, and so I, I'd just like to thank you for uh, for your proposal um, and I think that the changes that you made to what I had worked on are a, a positive thing and that it came out a lot better in your version than it was in my version. Oh thank you very much. Thank you. My name is, my name is Mitchell Rose. And in the initial mission statement that you showed, right? Yeah, go back. So you point out um, that it's for internet providers and the such. How do you see that with the blurring of like large enterprises? I work for Microsoft and I have as large of a network, if not larger than 
many people that come here and coming from the ISP side to a large enterprise. I'm seeing a lot of instances where if it's truly an operator's group, right, there's certainly best practices. There's a lot of things that I think that, that could be shared and that are shared, like VJ was saying in the hallways. Um, you know, there are common problems that we have. Do you see bringing more of that in or just keeping it ISP-centric? Well, I think that is kind of up to the steering committee and the program committee. The committee that may sound like a really cop-out answer, but uh, uh, but I don't presume to know the answer to the to that question. I, I think that's well, something for the community to discuss. Yeah, for, from a program committee perspective, um, we are trying to be inclusive. I personally don't work for a company that would really qualify under the original ISP only uh, charter of Danaga. I work for a content provider. We don't peer with anybody, we only buy transit. Um, but we do share a lot of the same problems and I do believe that there is a lot of common ground and one of the things that I want to do on the program committee is actively solicit uh, content from, or talks, whatever, participation from the, what's traditionally been on the fringes of, of uh, NANOG, which is the, the content players, the large enterprise players. Um, those people, other people who run big networks that aren't just backbones. I'm short. Um, my name is Chris Malater. I'm with TDS. Um, I serve on the mail list administration committee. Um, my question is about the proposed change to the mail list administration committee, where we go from three members um, appointed from the steering committee and um, one member. Right now we have two members from Merit that sit on it. And it's kind of a nice balance um, because uh, there's five people, so you, you can't get into a, a tie, per se, in the way that it works. Plus, I think that in this particular case, though, down the road, it, it, it could be revisited. I think that, the, that both employees from Merit have radically different um, experiences and both have, have been on the list for a long time and provide a lot of um, help to the volunteers from the community to, I, I think that you should look at changing it to, back to having two members from Merit on the mailing list administration committee. So just one from being, from being on it and seeing the, it, it's, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> seeing, <laughs> seeing that, I, I think that, I really think that to make sure that there's two there would probably, I, I, I think that it remains, it keeps the balance and still, um, we still get the, the knowledge from the Merit staff of historical data, which is invaluable for the rest of us as we go forward. Um, I'd also like to say to VJ, I think he's completely wrong, but that's only my opinion, and I think that the reform proposal is fabulous. Thank you. Okay, so VJ is going to rebut your statement, but uh, can I, bef before you before you rebut the he's completely wrong part, um, can uh, can I ask what do other people think about the question of uh, the number of members and the composition? In fact, uh, we so there, I think there are two questions: Do we have an odd number so there's never a tie? And uh, in order to get to the odd number, should there be two merit members? Should there be four members appointed by the steering committee and one appointed by merit? What, what it, do people have an opinion on that? The steering committee merit? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Daniel Karrenberg, Rev. NCC. I'm not going to, you, going to give you a straight answer, but I think what you want to do in any of this is you want to think carefully about what kind of functions require continuity and quote paid staff unquote mm -hmm. and what functions require um, representative things from the community or involvement of volunteers and I think that should be the guiding principle so the question is not is, do we need two people for merit on this on, on this particular uh, mailing list uh, committee or whatever it's called, but how much continuity do you, want, do you want there? Because if you put volunteers there, there's a chance of continuity but no guarantee. So that's the way to think about this. That's the way we did it a, lot, a long time ago uh, in RIPE where we had RIPE and we were doing lots of stuff with volunteers and then we created the RIPE NCC um, to have a paid staff component mm -hmm. uh, and, and quite consciously did that even before this in number registration game started. So think, think about it, what's, what's best done by volunteers and what's best done by paid staff and then make your decisions accordingly. That's a good point. 
Um, my rebuttal actually is, uh, A, I'll just ask the community two things. A, it's the content, stupid. So ever since we've implemented this, this uh, mailing list committee, has the mailing list gotten any better? I think there's more crap on it now than there was ever before. A. B, it's just a stupid mailing list. We don't need five people to run a stupid mailing list. Use proc mail. Jesus Christ, this is network operators group. Come on. Does anybody else think this is stupid or is it just me? No, so there is a lot of crap on the mailing list. I mean, you're right, and it is just a stupid mailing list. No one's going to lose their life over the Nanog mailing list. But, you know, the, the, the subscription, I think, goes up every so often, and the messages by the trends that we showed at the, uh, the mailing list at the other community meeting show that there's more and more things being posted. I mean, you know, I think I gave an opinion that night that said the mailing list is too big. Maybe that's something that instead of uh, trying to figure out, you know, I'm with you on delete key and proc mail. Um, but it seems like the majority of people aren't uh, for some reason and that may not be true as well I don't know what the middle is and what Merit could do to make everybody happy or what we could do to make ourselves happy Okay, one question if you can't manage a mailing list and you are running like internet networking I Yeah, pretty much <laughs> Well, I get a hundred percent uptime. What's yours? Okay, so we're going to get a room, these, some boxing gloves, and we'll sell tickets tonight. Um, okay. Um, after a year of heated discussions, I can't believe that we have 15 minutes worth of, of questions and comments. I say we take what we have, we cut the, uh, the mailing list, uh, censorship board, whatever the hell they call it nowadays, the, the, the Politburo, put it down to like two people, do some of this reform thing, and I really don't care, really. I mean, just, just get a move on. I've wasted more time of my life doing this when I could have been talking to people and actually moving on with what I really wanted to do. So I think we should revert back to what the original proposal was, um, don't worry about the mailing list. Don't worry about like percentage composition of two from a merit and versus one from the program committee. That, I think that's bullshit. And just pick three people, call it done. So I'd like to offer to give my spot up on the mailing list to VJ. And I support his two person, uh, <laughs> his two person proposal. I think we should just go to a one person mailing list and have VJ just run it there. I, you know, I, I <laughs> I think the problem herein lies is that, that the masses spoke that they that they wanted it this way, and if you if you don't if you don't if you don't if you don't like that, then that's fine, VJ. But you can't you can't just dis you can't just throw away everybody else's opinion and say that this is this is the way it is. I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what do you what do you want? From a realistic point of view. Okay, the half the people who started off with this big noise about we're gonna reform NANA, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, half of them aren't even here. Okay? It's because this is hard work and I appreciate the people who are doing this and I think they're doing a pretty good job running it. I think the winders need to STFU and go do some real networking. Okay, so um you know, I think that uh, I, I I think that we've got a Well, I mean, <clears throat> I'm trying to find the right way to say this. Uh, so, uh, you know, everything is uh, everything is everything is an approximation. Uh, uh, everything uh, you try it, you see what works. If the things that don't work, you fix. Uh, and and I think that's the way that we're thinking about this. So we put this stuff in place. We try it. The things that have value, we keep. The things that don't have value, we work on. Uh, we don't uh, build bureaucracy that lasts for for a million years if it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. I mean, just to reiterate what I said the other night, um, 
I think the mailing list experiment, moderation experiment, has worked. I mean, um, the people who complained about mailing list moderation are now not complaining about mailing list moderation. Um, so, to the extent that you know more experimentation is not really necessary, I'm not sure. Um, you know that this should be a really hard problem. Mailing list moderation should be something that has a really light touch, and by and large, people shouldn't be aware that it exists at all. Yes, the signal to noise ratio of the nanog list is really high. Um, that's a property of the number of people on it. Low, excuse me. <laughs> the noise to signal ratio is very high. <laughs> yeah. And so, for, you know, formal uh, some sort of formal evaluation mechanism, like like the surveys that we do at the meetings, there needs to be some evaluation mechanism for deciding whether moderation is working. I think. Yeah, so for anybody who's listening and didn't hear that, the, the plan is to do a survey on mailing list on the mailing list after the current program committee survey is completed so people aren't being multiply surveyed at once. Mike Hughes, goddamn limey, going home on uh, Thursday. So um, several large mailing lists. I'm not suggesting we go around, the, around and debate this again and again, but several large mailing lists have more than one moderator. That is normal. That is, that is pretty standard. At least one of them, though, has to be the person with God on the box. Hmm. So, you know, uh, I think everybody knows what's on topic, and I think the survey idea was a good one only to be able to go, anybody who doesn't understand what uh, is on topic, like, go look at the survey. But, I mean, you know, the reality is uh, there are a lot of other lists out there that Themselves with like a, you know one guy with God on the box and they just make things happen now you know why does uh, the nanog list uh, not not able to do that I don't know and as far as like um, the people who so the, I I just heard someone make this comment I'm sorry I don't remember your name but um, the people who were whining about moderation while they're not doing it on the public list anymore they are doing it to myself, Chris, and possibly Steve in our ear. And when we've asked for feedback from people, like, what do you want us to do, um, there's only been a few cases of people willing to actually give the feedback. Now, I'm glad that we're having all this feedback here, but where are you during, like, when these things are happening? You know, we got a lot of feedback on one issue, which I think we all know what that is. And, uh, you know, we don't really need to debate that. But, um, you know, so I don't necessarily disagree with VJ. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree with Joel, I think, but um, you know, when there are more people that can't do it than can, um, well, you know, when you run your network, you've got to cut your losses and segregate. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here. Uh, as an outside observer, I have this question. No, you're not an outside observer. You have voting privileges. You, <laughs> you came to an anag meeting. Yeah, sure. I'm not sure whether I'll exercise them, though. Um, why don't you guys just declare victory and have a nice afternoon? I'm all for that. Do I, I the floor enter, or the chair entertains a motion to adjourn? <laughs> no. I, I'm all no, for we, that. We don't have to just sit here all afternoon on a beautiful afternoon and debate something that's been debated to death. I don't know any bad jokes. I'm sorry, Mike. They're all good jokes. There, there, there's one thing that I did notice that came up out of this whole reform thing, and um, it actually goes to a point Casey made a long time ago when we were having these discussions, and, and that is, um, why do things have to get to such a head that this whole reform movement started in the first place? Is there something that ought to be happening as part of this whole NANOG event that we're not doing that we ought to be doing so that little problems don't turn into these big monster things that may require this big organizational shift. Yeah, I think you're exactly We have survey forms. We've had survey forms for a long time, but uh, yeah, I think we heard yeah. earlier that, what, 80 some got filled out of, by, uh, for a meeting of 400 people? Yeah, that's so actually not a bad return rate. If you talk to somebody who does surveys for a living, that's not a bad return rate. Yeah. I, I think I, w I will answer Bill's question by saying that uh, 
you know, at least among those of us who, you know, started discussing this several months ago, the I think the feeling on that was that what would make that difference was a lot more open communication, and I think we've we've gotten to that point now. Yeah. So as as Daniel suggests, um, you know, I think I'm ready to go declare victory and have a nice afternoon here. Um, I I was noticing um, in response to Mitchell's comment a while back about. Um, the word internet providers in the mission statement and where that leaves big networks that are not selling internet services but are offer, operating big complex internet networks. Um, I'd suggest changing that to, uh, to network operators instead of uh, internet providers. Middle on the screen. Let's call it network operators. Technology technology deployment in the deployment in the internet networks, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think uh, closing the loop uh, I, I, Will help. I think um, being deliberate about communicating about these issues. You know, having having the meta conversation, not just having the conversation about uh, the 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 topics of the talks that we're having this week, but uh, having the conversation about Nanog, uh, which which you need to be deliberate about. You need to make time to have that conversation. You perhaps don't have to set aside a total of seven hours at each Nanog meeting to do this. Uh, but this is kind of an unusual transition circumstance. But doing the surveys and then feeding the results of the surveys back, uh, talking about the finances like we did on, on Sunday night, which was the first time that's ever happened. Um, providing an opportunity, f maybe just a short opportunity at each, at each NANOG meeting for people to stand up and say what they think about the way things are going. Uh, I think all of these things, making, making that discussion about NANOG itself deliberate paying some attention to it will keep us from getting to the to the place where you need a, a revolution. Although sometimes you just need a revolution, right? I'm going to relay some stuff from Ren from uh -huh. IRC. So um, there's she had a couple of feedback items that she wanted to put in. In terms of the content of the meeting, she said that um, there should be a peering buff each meeting that's not in the middle of the night, um, an IX panel each meeting. Um, the surveys have always had feedback about not putting the peering buff in the middle of the night, and it still happens. Um, let's see, it should be blah, blah, blah. Uh, the scheduling, um, people are, have, or Joe said uh, to not schedule the meeting during non-business hours. Um, um, change the surveys um, to have different questions. Um, I think that's about it. I don't know. <laughs> so, can, can do you want to? I, I don't know how to deal with that. So, I can only relay the question. <laughs> Ren, what questions do you want? I think that it was both. I think not only was it when we should have them, but if we should have them. And I believe that her point is we should have them each meeting and they should not be in the middle of the night. I, I can comment on a couple of those things. Um, yes, we know. Uh, we tried to arrange the schedule so we wouldn't have to have late boffs this time uh, because mm -hmm. of constraints. We weren't able to do that. Um, one of the constraints, of course, being this meeting here. Um, what, what we did do this time around was switch the peering boff and the security boff so that the Peering buff was earlier and the security one was later. Um, but yeah, we would like to move to a point where we can have the buffs in late in the afternoon or something like that instead. Um, it's not going to happen. It didn't happen here. It may or may not be able to happen in, in LA. We'll find out. Um, but certainly, we haven't forgotten that that's a, a priority for some people, and we want to work towards that. Um, in terms of survey questions, uh, if somebody wants to help design the survey, we would be more than happy to take the input, um, uh, or even let let you design it all together. Um, we we go around each time debating which questions to ask, and never really come get good answers. Um, let's see, there was another point. 
which I have forgotten about, so I won't bother talking about it. Hi, my name is David Cook. I'm with TDS, and I, I wanted to clarify uh, something around the, the peering boss. Uh, there's a larger discussion about network operations and what network operations means, and one of the underlying points there is some of that has shifted over time, and I, I think one subtext is uh, request to somehow feedback into the program committee that which is shifting and that which is important for the uh, for the network operators. This example was peering. There may be other examples over time that I think we should be paying attention to, and that was just some more context around that. Just on the BOSS scheduling thing, it seems like everyone that I talk to, and we've heard it on surveys and other things, comes here as much for face-to-face -face time with people and talking as they do to actually see the presentations. And I've never been able to figure out why the BOFs and other sort of semi-structured forums for people to do that aren't interleaved in with the technical program in the day as a part of the focus of this event, since it seems like what people come here for. Okay, I heard a sizable body of sentiment for declaring victory and enjoying the day. Is that the sense of the group? Well, I, yes, uh, that's what I thought. So I, I just want to say thanks again to everybody who's taken the time to express an opinion, to uh, put in so much work on the NANOG reform draft, uh, to, uh, to keep your two by four out and keep whacking merit upside the head with it until we listened. Uh, thanks to everybody for being so committed to NANOG. I think uh, I, I'm excited about this. I think uh, it's a it's a good experiment to try. It's going to make NANOG a better uh, a better activity for everybody involved. So thanks to all of you. I really appreciate it. That's it. <laughs>